Welcome to Magic Spiral, I'm Landon Balk. We have recently relocated our studios and made a few updates. This means that projects have taken a short hiatus. In the meantime, I've decided to keep myself busy. And what better side project to keep myself busy with than to record an album using the 4-track cassette? This won't be my first time recording an album this way. Not by necessity, but by the decision to make a mess for my own amusement. It's like a license to kill. You can get away with doing anything you want. I have it, you want it, what you gonna do? I'm super, I'm doing, I'm chilling, I'm so cool. Another reason I wanted to do it is because it's damn good exercise. Check out my face. You have to keep the momentum going. After a while, you come to know your equipment and what you're capable of doing with it. See where we're headed? To start, I decided to use two 60-minute tapes that I purchased as a lucky find at the local record store. With the 4-track, this means I get roughly 30 minutes of recording time in total. It just felt like a good number. Many albums from the early 60s clock around 30 minutes. I imagined each tape as side 1 and side 2, each side lasting roughly 15 minutes long. Each tape will be recorded in running order from start to finish. I decided to go without using noise reduction on this project because I felt like it. Good start, a quick decision, on to the next one. I used my MPCs to sequence synths and drum parts. No surprise there. My mic was plugged into this cheap Behringer 2 preamp running through the Roland SP404, which was being used as an effects processor. The bass was also run through the SP404. For guitars, I used the Digitech RP360HP, and that's about it. Track 1 being the Odd Man Out, where I used an acoustic guitar and the Casio SK-1. The backing tracks were recorded as a live performance, usually captured as a stereo mix of the MIDI sequence on tracks 3 and 4. I set the levels, armed the tracks, pressed record, and felt out a performance. Some songs required many takes, namely thesis statement. During the beginning of the album, I had everything piped directly into the 4-track. As the studio was being put back together, I had everything plugged into this 24-channel mixer, running the stereo mix into the 4-track. You can hear this as the album progresses. There are songs that even required me to play an instrument while I performed a DJ-style mix. You can hear the guitar go slightly out of time here. That's because I'm anticipating reaching for the button in between guitar strums to add in the additional drum part. You can hear I correct myself and run with the riff that comes out as a result of the mistake. It's a happy tree and I like how it turned out. 
Tracks 1 and 2 were often dedicated to bass guitar, vocals, or electric guitar. In this song, I recorded a bass part onto track 2, but then decided I wanted to add a vocal harmony. When I recorded the lead vocal, I bounced the bass guitar with the vocal onto track 1, leaving the original bass track to be erased by the vocal harmony. There's only four tracks, so these are the decisions you have to live with. Effects were printed straight to tape, and there was minimal punching in. It all relied on a performance. Because I had to do the song in one pass, I often needed numerous takes to get the performance right. It became fatiguing and frustrating, and it's far from perfect, but it was also a ton of fun. A lot got left in that I would have cut out had it been easy enough. That's really all it is, a stereo mix of the backing tracks and two tracks left over for overdubs. This means that you're pretty much stuck with what you give yourself. I say run with it, even if it is like standing on ice. On ice. The artist's name is Smee because this is the alter ego that I've given myself to record to tape ever since I was a lad. In fact, the last step in tracking was to add snippets from my previous recordings as Smee. as well as a text-to-speech computer voice. Just to tie everything together, like this rug, man. I found where there was empty space between the songs on tracks 1 and 2, and played the audio from my phone. The phone was connected through the SP404, which again was being used for effects. Finally, I recorded the stereo mix of each song into a field recorder. Then I brought those files into Adobe Audition where the digitized tracks were placed back into seamless order, and lightly mastered with Ozone 8. And there you have it. The people that have heard the album so far have mentioned to me that the second half seems to be better than the first half. I think it's true, and it is an interesting observation. As I mentioned earlier, I had less equipment involved in the beginning. Remember, this album was recorded from beginning to end in a linear fashion. The other reason I think it gets better is because as I kept going, my performances became tighter and my ideas more developed. See what we did there? I've had people ask me if they could pick my brain on numerous occasions. It just struck me as a good title. The artwork I used for the cover was done by my friend Matt a number of years ago, and it's the image that came to mind. Pick your brain. So what's the takeaway here? Did I create something for the sole purpose of amusing myself? Yes. Yes, I did. And I say why not? If you're going to make a joke, why not get others in on it? Hi, my name is Ronin, God in love, I'm hot.